Joseph James O'Connor, aka Plo Glock Joe, is one of the most infamous members of the OG community, as he managed to become one of the richest in the comp, flexing insanely rare social media accounts, designer suits, watches, and luxury trips around the world. He even managed to buy his way into celebrities' inner circles like Rice Gum. Joe always bailed you out of jail in GTA. It's your turn now. <laughs> bro, stop, bro, stop, bro, stop, stop, bro. Um, <laughs> listen, in GTA, yo, he really did though, bro. No, I'm thinking, yo, in GTA, I'm not even joking, bro. I'm now, the reason Joe was so well known was that he was involved in many, and I mean many, insane hacks. Some of which include hacking into the TikTok account of Dixie D'Amelio, being involved in the big 2020 Twitter hack that stole over 130 valuable accounts, and stealing millions of dollars from various cryptocurrency exchanges. He was eventually arrested in Spain at his apartment before getting extradited to the US. US and facing up to 77 years in prison. But before we get into all that, let's get into his backstory. Joseph was actually just a regular Joe from the United Kingdom, spending most of his days playing games on Xbox like GTA, COD, or Minecraft. This was until he discovered sim swapping, a type of identity theft where you can steal anyone's phone number granted you have enough information on them. This is usually done through an insider at the victim's phone company. In 2018, Joe gained access to Logan Paul's accounts, posting a video on his channel claiming to be giving away 1500 iPhones, and prompting viewers to click the link in the description. He was kicked out of the account within just 3 hours, and Logan Paul got it back shortly after. From there, he was officially known in the OG users community and got himself involved with various groups of hackers, including Chuckling Squad. Now this group includes some known community members such as Debug, Owen, Aqua, Cory, Nublom, and of course, Plugwalk Joe. And yes, that's the same Debug that bought the most expensive account in Minecraft, as well as multiple hacked Mojang staff accounts. Now Chuckling Squad alone had a crazy track record of hacking celebrity accounts. Starting in August 2019, they took over the Twitter and Instagram accounts of James Charles, King Batch, Shane Dawson, Amanda Cerny, and even Twitter founder Jack Dorsey got hacked. This was of course done by sim swapping all of them, and the team began posting crazy, and I mean crazy tweets that were honestly really funny shortly after the account takeovers. This story then takes a much darker turn, as they somehow managed to get into the accounts of the famous streamer Etika. The reason this was so fucked up was because he had committed suicide a mere month earlier, and many celebrities like PewDiePie tried reaching out to simply get them to respect the deceased streamer. Now, I can respect going for all these other celebrities, you know, but someone who's dead should just be left alone, man. Not cool. Not cool at all. The hacks then continued, and again in 2020, the group got access to both Maria Carey and Adam Sandler's phone numbers, and basically just ended up sending out the same old tweets promoting their group and their personal socials. One of the members of the group was then arrested in February 2021, shortly after they took over the accounts of Jason Derulo, and not much has been heard of the group since. Anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves now. We need to go back to 2019. You see, Joe was also involved in various other cybercrimes. In 2019, he took part in a crypto hijacking worth approximately $700. $190,000. He wasn't alone in this, and I'm sure he was partnered with some Chuckling Squad members during this attack, but it all started on April 30th when they managed to successfully sim swap an executive at the crypto exchange Gemini. From there, they used the stolen phone number to gain access to the crypto accounts and computer systems at the company. There, they found the crypto, most of it being Litecoin and Ethereum. From there, they tried laundering the cryptocurrency, but this clearly failed because the reason he was caught is because the funds were eventually deposited into a crypto exchange account in Joe's name. He's also taken over the accounts of Bella Thorne in 2019 and attempted to extort her with her nude photos. But Bella didn't take the bait and instead decided to post the photos herself. Pretty good way to say fuck you to be honest. Then in 2020, he gained access to the TikTok accounts of Addison Rae and Dixie D'Amelio with the help of Chuckling Squad once again. Along with some names that we haven't seen before such as Zack, Koi, Remain, Gerv, and Funky. Together they made some kids go live on Dixie's Twitter and even posted this video before the account got deleted. Team Bretar should have used the fucking middleman. Anyway, I think that's enough background information on Joe. As you can tell, he's been pretty heavily involved in the takeover of a decent amount of celebrities, but bro was just getting started because 2020 would be a crazy year for him. The trouble started when Graham Ivan Clark, along with a few more members of the community, managed to fish their way into a Twitter employee's backend account and gained access to Twitter's internal tools. With these tools, they stole over 130 accounts, ranging from OG names to celebrities to brand accounts. Joe was pretty lightly involved in this attack as he 
he was the guy buying all the OG names. He bought the account at 6 for $10,000 and showed interest in buying other accounts like at Y and at Lost, along with a few more, although I don't know if he actually ended up purchasing them. I think most of you who know my channel are familiar with this hack, but for those of you who aren't, Graham ended up taking over the accounts of former President Barack Obama, Bill Gates, future Twitter owner Elon Musk, and over a hundred more celebrity accounts promoting a doubling Bitcoin scam. He stole a mere $118,000, which to be honest was shit all compared to the potential of the scheme, but Joe wasn't really involved in any of that to be fair, he was just there to buy some names really. Regardless, his purchases of what was clearly stolen accounts made him a conspirator in the case. In an interview shortly after the hack, Joe openly admits to knowing the accounts were stolen and can be quoted saying, they can come arrest me, I would laugh at them, I haven't done anything. Famous last words, I know. About one year after the hack had went down, Plug Walk Joe would be arrested at his apartment in Spain, and then extradited to the USA where he would face trial. Funny enough, he would somehow still hop on Discord almost every day while he was locked up in Spain. His involvement in the Twitter hack wasn't actually enough to get him extradited, but the FBI had been building a case on him for a while, so that didn't really matter. Besides the Twitter hack, he was charged for both the SimSwap attack of the Gemini crypto executives, as well as the attacks on Addison Ray and Bella Thorne. He's now facing up to 77 years in prison for all his charges combined. Now, I have to be honest, as serious as these crimes are, there's an even darker side to Joe that I've been keeping away from you until now. You see, Plugwalk Joe was also heavily involved in swatting anyone he thought was a threat to him, or wouldn't obey his wishes. If you don't know what that is, it's basically sending a SWAT team to raid someone else's house you dislike, by pretending to be a real threat like an armed man with pipe bombs for example. The money had really gone to Joe's head at this point as you can see. It's reported that Plugwalk Joe had called up a police station in Orange County, California, pretending to be a father that had caught his wife cheating. He then said he was going to kill her and their six children with a Molotov if he didn't receive $50,000, and then he gave the address of the unknown victim who reported this case. On that same day, he emailed a high school in the same area under a fake email address, pretending to be the unknown victim saying he was going to shoot and kill minorities at the school because black lives don't matter and they need to fuck off American soil and give us our freedom back. He then made another reddit post threatening two restaurants with a similar threat and then another called to the closest airport. This was yet another reason Joe would get extradited to the US as this is a much more serious crime than the sim swap attacks and has a much higher maximum sentence. Now of course, this is all just one victim but it's clear that Joe knew what he was doing or at the very least had done this before. Who knows how many people he's actually swatted. Now you might be wondering how we know Joe's behind all these various attacks. Well, it's because he loved the attention. Joe would frequently post his socials on any account he could get his hands on, usually with some reference to plug walking, but not only that, his operational security was also pretty horrendous. You see, Joe's opsec consisted of a VPN and maybe a virtual machine. Not much else to be honest, and he used the same servers over and over, so eventually he just created a new string of social circles under these new servers that all just connected back to his personal accounts. Now, let's talk money, because because if you've been listening, you'd remember that I said earlier that Joe was one of the richest people in the community. But I've only told you about one theft that was worth barely $800,000. I mean, yeah, that's a shit ton of money, but we've covered much bigger thefts than that from other call members. This is because I don't actually know how much money Joe had, but he was always reported to have a net worth in the eight figures. That's at least $10 million if you didn't know. Joe used to buy a lot of accounts from my friends since we had most of the good Minecraft OG names back in 2020. He bought the Snapchat account at dog off my friend, which was actually the account used when he tried to extort Bella Thorne. He also bought some OG names like Sad and Winter on Minecraft, and a few others, but this was a really long time ago, so I don't really remember. Now, I can't prove it at all that Joe had this huge net worth, but there are a few factors we can look at. None of his crypto assets got seized, at least as far as I can tell, which means he stashed it somewhere. There were some rumors going around that I remember about some $10 million treasure being buried in the backyard somewhere, but this was more of a joke than anything. Also, Joe lived in an apartment building, so there was no yard. Joe flexed a lot, and I mean a lot of designer, bust-down watches, and other luxury goods. He was also pretty well known as one of the biggest buyers of OG names at this time, having no problem with overpaying for the accounts he wanted. On top of this, he also developed a GTA roleplay server alongside Ricegum and was a frequent guest on his streams due to him being a baller. The server never took off, obviously due to him getting arrested, but all of this obviously cost money, not to mention his cost of living in Spain was pretty high as well because he did ball out a decent amount. He would also need money to do all these sim swap on these celebrities, so it's definitely safe to assume he had more money than that one attack, I simply can't tell you how much. It's a pretty similar situation with Graham, the guy who actually took over those Twitter accounts in 2020. He got 
arrested before the actual hack and the police found around $4 million in a hardware wallet owned by Clark. However, since he was a youthful offender and they could only tie around a million dollars of the stolen funds to actual fraudulent activity, Clark got to keep the other three million simply because the police couldn't do much against him due to his age. So on paper, Clark has only stolen 1.1 million, but in reality we know it's much more. Now, most of the audio for this video was recorded before Joe received his sentence, which was a maximum of 77 years or something like that, but as of June 23rd, Joe has been sentenced to 5 years in federal prison, with 28 months withdrawn from the time he served in Spain. That means he has just 2 years and 8 months left, but he will probably serve around a year and a half since most people involved in these crimes tend to get out early. Regardless, that's still an extremely light sentence compared to all the trouble he caused. There's a lot of stuff I skipped in this video, so feel free to update this story in the comments. The lesson for the rest of y'all today is that VPNs are not some magic tool that turns you anonymous. Peace. Blow bands, blow bands, blow bands. Blow bands, blow bands, blow bands. Check my pants, they say true.